Hello and welcome to Midday Report here on TVP World. I'm your host, Marie Cato. The White House has confirmed that deliveries of air defense missiles to Ukraine have been suspended. According to Donald Trump's spokesperson, Caroline Levitt, the decision was made to, quote, put American interests in the first place. A White House Deputy Press Secretary said in a statement that the decision was made following a Department of Defense review of U.S. military support to countries around the globe. According to the documents, it was motivated by concerns that U.S. military stockpiles are falling too low. Deputy Press Secretary Ann Kelly added that the strength of the U.S. remains unquestioned, referring to last month's strikes on three Iranian nuclear facilities. The announcement was also addressed by the Under Secretary of Defense for Policy, Elbridge Colby, who said that his department continues to provide Trump with options for aiding Ukraine, in line with his goal of bringing the war to an end. At the same time, the Pentagon is adopting its approach to achieving this objective, while ensuring the U.S. forces' readiness for administration defense priorities. Belarusian President Alexander Lukashenko has pardoned 16 people convicted of extremism as well as other crimes. This comes after Lukashenko freed opposition leaders Sergei Tchikanovsky and 13 others in June after talks with U.S. Special Envoy Keith Kellogg. According to the state-run news outlet Belta, those pardoned included eight women and eight men, several of whom have chronic diseases, are disabled or have children under the age of 18. There is no information, however, if Polish-Belarusian journalist Andrzej Pochobot was among those released. As of today, there are over 1,100 political prisoners in Belarus, most of them charged with extremism, according to the human rights organization Viasna. Ukraine has summoned the American embassy's top diplomat in Kyiv after the U.S. halted weapon shipments to Ukraine. Meanwhile, Russia continues its attacks. Overnight strikes killed at least three people and left dozens wounded across Ukraine. Our correspondent Oz Katerji has more. Good afternoon, Oz. Can you tell us more about the latest details? Good afternoon. Well, uh, this has come uh, in recent hours. Uh, Ukraine's foreign minister, Andrei Sabiha, has called uh, the charged affairs, the deputy head of the mission, the U.S. mission in Ukraine. Now, it should be said there's no current uh, U.S. ambassador to Ukraine after the last one uh, stepped down. Uh, so John Hinckley, that's the uh, deputy head, was brought in by Andrei Sabiha uh, regarding uh, this uh, intercepting missiles and ammunition that was supposed to be sent uh, by the Biden administration. This is still uh, the Biden administration's aid that was supposed to be coming through. Uh, now, there's a statement uh, published by the uh, FT uh, by the foreign ministry saying any delay or hesitation in supporting Ukraine only encourages the aggressor to continue the war and acts of terror rather than seek peace. Now, it's understood that uh, Pac-3 Patriot interceptors as well as 155 mm millimeter artillery shells were included in this package that has been halted. So this is a serious problem for Ukraine. They've been asking the U.S. to buy more Patriot systems. So to have Patriot uh, missiles that were promised to them uh, halted at the last minute uh, by the U.S., uh, by Donald Trump's Pentagon policy chief, Elbridge Colby, is going to go down very, very badly here in Ukraine. And they're going to be seeking uh, some kind of solution. That's why uh, the deputy head of the U.S. mission has been uh, summoned by Kyiv. Uh, it looks like a very difficult situation uh, for Kyiv to navigate with the White House, uh, but they will be hoping they can see, uh, they can try and talk the uh, U.S. round into changing their mind and bringing uh, these sy systems back to Ukraine. They're, some of them were already in Poland uh, due to be shipped. So this is a major, major, major headache for the Ukrainians. As you said, the Russians continue to strike uh, Ukraine repeatedly uh, and kill civilians day in, day out. Here. Back to you in the studio. Oskar reporting uh, from Kiev, Ukraine live with the latest details. Many thanks. Poland will introduce temporary border controls with Germany and Lithuania starting July 7th amid escalating tensions over migration and nationalist patrols. Polish Prime Minister Donald Tusk says the move aims to curb both illegal border crossings and the rise of far-right citizen patrols obstructing border operations. 
According to data released by Poland's Ministry of Interior, since January of this year, Germany has readmitted 89 people to Poland under bilateral agreements, and 225 under the EU's Dublin procedure. These numbers are down from 357 and 331 respectively last year, and over 560 and 400 in 2023. Tusk says Poland's patience is running out, accusing Berlin of making it harder to verify whether those returned actually belong in Poland. Polish police have broken up a brutal Ukrainian gang accused of kidnapping African migrants in Poland and Latvia. The kidnappers reportedly demanded ransom under a threat of murder and organ trafficking. Four suspects have been detained in a coordinated operation by Poland's Central Bureau of Investigation. They were apprehended after two Ethiopian men who had been held captive in western Poland managed to escape. The victims were said to have been stripped by their kidnappers, tied up and transported in the trunk of a car before managing to escape their captors on June 14th. Authorities believe the same group was behind another violent kidnapping just days later in Latvia. On June 24th, three men from Mali were abducted and held in similar conditions. According to Polish daily Rzeczpospolita, investigators found that the gang had been smuggling migrants to Western Europe, transporting them to Germany, the UK and beyond for a fee. Polska Grupa Zbrojeniowa will receive 2.4 billion złoty, more than 550 billion euros in funding from the Capital Investment Fund to expand its ammunition production capacity, announced Poland's Minister of State Assets and the Defense Minister. This will enable a significant increase in the production potential in the fields of materials and warfare agents, including the currently key 155 mm ammunition. Today, Minister Jaworowski transferred 2.4 billion zloty to four companies within the Polish arms group for the construction of ammunition factories. What had been impossible for years due to the incompetence of those previously responsible has become a reality. This would not have been possible without the Ministry of National Defense, as a large portion of funds that went to the Capital Investment Fund came under the act from the funds of the Ministry of National Defense intended for defense and security. Denmark is ramping up its defense posture. Military service for women in the country begins this week as part of a broader push to deter Russian threats. As of the 1st of July, the Danish armed forces will now include women in compulsory military service, thus ending a male-only draft system. All 18-year-olds will now enter a lottery for potential conscription. The government is also extending service from 4 to 11 months, aiming to boost annual conscript numbers by 40% by 2033. Until now, this has been limited to men, although women were allowed to volunteer. If deemed necessary, the Danish defense minister has the authority to deploy conscripts abroad. Copenhagen set in motion the mandatory conscription process after Norway and Sweden introduced theirs in 2013 and 2017, respectively. The main armoured tank of Europe, or MARS, project has officially been launched, marking a significant milestone for European defence cooperation and technological sovereignty. Piotr Szymański, a senior fellow at the Centre for Eastern Studies, recently joined TVP World to speak about Poland's involvement in the project. I think that uh, Poland uh, has been over the recent years focused uh, on the cooperation in this armored uh, tank uh, domain, especially uh, with uh, our partners in the United States uh, and uh, South Korea. So uh, Poland uh, procures uh, tanks uh, from these uh, two directions and uh, has been focused on uh, quick uh, deliveries to our armed forces because uh, Poland uh, has donated uh, over 300 uh, tanks to Ukraine. We have to replenish uh, at the faster pace and uh, therefore we right now are not focusing on development of a new platform which is time and money consuming rather than that uh, we want to ensure uh, deliveries in uh, the uh, next years uh, in order as well to uh, maintain our support for ukraine 
U.S. President Donald Trump has announced that Israel has agreed to the conditions of a 60-day ceasefire in Gaza. According to Trump's post on his social media platform, Qatar and Egypt will present the final proposal, and he urged Hamas to accept the deal. My representatives had a long and productive meeting with the Israelis today on Gaza. Israel has agreed to the necessary conditions to finalize the 60-day ceasefire, during which time we will work with all parties to end the war. The Qataris and Egyptians, who have worked very hard to help bring peace, will deliver this final proposal. I hope, for the good of the Middle East, that Hamas takes this deal, because it will not get better. It will only get worse. Thank you for your attention to this matter. A representative of the Council of Europe has said she's deeply concerned about the escalating tensions in Serbia amid ongoing mass anti-government protests continue in the Balkan country. The rapporteur of the Parliamentary Assembly of the Council of Europe monitoring Serbia has called on all parties to defuse the situation, refrain from violence and engage in constructive dialogue. The appeal follows Saturday's protests attending, attended by around 140,000 people, which ended in violent clashes with the police. Authorities Authorities report 77 arrests and dozens of injuries. Polish astronaut Sławosz Uznański Wisniewski conducted a live lesson straight from the International Space Station for hundreds of Polish students. He is currently taking part in the Ignis mission, now in its fifth day of conducting experiments in Earth's orbit. Students witness experiments conducted by Sławosz Uznański Wisniewski on board the ISS designed by young people and selected through a competition for best space experiment. One example, how to stir water in a glass with a spoon on microgravity. There was also a Q&A session with the Polish astronaut. The Ignis mission is now approaching its halfway point. According to Sergio Palumberi, head of the AX4 mission, more than one third of its initial goals have already been achieved and the mission is progressing as planned. <laughs> Nie wiem, czy słyszycie dźwięk, ale na pewno widzicie diody LED. Możecie. Jak odmienne warunki wpływają na codzienną rutynę astronautów podczas misji, między innymi na spanie? Relations between Russia and Azerbaijan have reached a new low. Both countries have engaged in a rare escalation of judicial measures against each other in recent days. More on the issue on TVP World's Break the Faith tonight at 7.15 p.m. CET. Tensions are brewing between Russia and Azerbaijan, and the Russian propaganda machine is trying very desperately to spin the whole narrative. What is actually happening? Is Russia losing another ally? Well, spoiler alert, actually, no. If you want to learn more about the drama, tune in to Break the Fake, only on TVP World. And this brings us to the end of Midday Report here on TVP World. Make sure you stay tuned for more on our channel. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.